What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now Plus. I'm Alex, and in this video, we got to talk about some take two news, some depressing news. And this is one that, you know, sometimes you try to rationalize it. Sometimes you try to say, okay, you know, if all you do is you make bad games or if you make really bad decisions, sometimes things happen. The economy is struggling. Some of these companies can't afford to take massive losses. Maybe you got to do what you got to do. It's always really tough for the workers, and I feel for them. But, you know, sometimes you try to rationalize it. This one I have a very hard time rationalizing, and this one this one just doesn't make a lot of sense to me um, for a lot of reasons. Now, the actual news itself, right, is them really going after private division, which, from what I understand, was kind of like a spin-off thing. Now, they did actually absorb or buy these studios, the IPs. They did that a while ago. And so to call them indie is definitely tough, right? It's kind of like when, I think, what, Dave the Diver was nominated for the Game Awards, and it's like, well, that's connected to some, like, really big publisher. So although it might be indie in spirit, it's technically not indie. It's kind of the same thing here, right? So we have a, one of the two teams, two big teams were kind of affected by this. One of them just put out Roller Drome last year. And I love this game. I really, I think I did a, a review on one of these channels on it. That game freaking rocks. And again, the thing about rationalizing is that game kind of had it all. It's an it's a indie game in spirit, made from an indie team in spirit, and I'll expand upon that in a little while. But also, I mean, okay, it got high scores. People liked it online. Now, that's not everything. What about sales? It actually sold really, really good for what it was. So their last game, and again, like it won awards. I think it won like a BAFTA thing, which I could literally care less about. I know the studios care about those things. I don't. But again, when you mix in Critical Darling as well as the game actually sold really, really well, especially for being like somewhat indie. Um, now, again, that, that is where it gets messy because some of these teams, I think, have like 70, 80 people in them. Again, you're owned by Take-Two. They sold themselves to Take-Two. So it's like you maybe should have had – maybe uh, looking back, you shouldn't have done that. But you know what? They, I think they probably made the decision that they felt they had to in the moment. I, I don't think you can really blame them all for it, right? But I do want to kind of spin this to an indie like talk, right? And it's like, so specifically take two, I I'm having a hard time to, uh, believing that they're like really big fans of indie type games, right? Because although they're owning it, these are definitely more again, indie games in spirit. And you know, we've kind of talked about where the industry kind of has to go over the next couple years, several years, right? Where the, the age of the $300 million AAA games, it's going to end. And you can talk a little bit about like the scumminess of Take-Two, and maybe we can do that just really fast. I know we talked about it in, in the past with like, GTA 6 is about to come in and make them billions with a B, right? Like it's going to make them so much money and GTA Online, GTA 6 Online, whatever it'll be called right afterwards, like they are going to be rolling in dough. And I understand like their entire, it's a take two is huge. You know what I mean? I know it's not all GTA, but they have the biggest cash cow in waiting that you could ever have. Like you look at Microsoft, you look at Sony, you look at anybody, anybody else, and you say, okay, like what's coming up? And it, it might be good. It might look good on paper. It might even do well sales-wise. None of them have in waiting what Take-Two has. So immediately it does look bad when you trim people off your stat. Like no matter what, whether it's redundancies, whether it's this or that, if you do that, it's immediately going to look bad because you're really, if there's anybody that doesn't need to do do that it's kind of them now on top of it like i mentioned with roller drum like some of these games have sold really well these studios are profitable so it's like you're getting rid of them for like what reason right and again circles back to what we've kind of talked about when you do these indie uh, you know double a even like a single a is that even a thing i guess that would be more indie right double a and indie when you do that, and that's the future, I think, uh, like a lot more games of that and, and probably less AAA games, one thing I guess you have to throw a caveat in is I hope that you don't, so you're, you're not owned or you have no link to a big AAA publisher. Because if you have that, um, I don't know, like you would think these big AAA publishers would like studios like that, as I constantly say, right? Less people less time to make a game, less budget, smaller budget, and then if you make money, you can actually probably make more money off of an indie game because what if it explodes? What if it blows up? Imagine how much you can make off of that versus, and we've talked about this as kind of a classic example, and I don't like punching down this game because I actually quite, Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, I think it's a great game, but you know, if, if, if your game sells, 
$350 million. And I, I think it's obviously done more than that, but let's just say 350 The game costs 300 uh, you you didn't make a lot. You know, you made actually quite a bit, but it cost so much that the actual like your, your actual take home revenue was not very high. Well, imagine a game that costs ten million dollars because it's a, it's a you know more indie thing, and the game explodes randomly, which sometimes that can happen. Look at maybe Hell Divers Two as an example, or Pal World is a good one too, right? It explodes, maybe makes a hundred million dollars. That indie game would have outsold or outmade money of, of Spider Man Two in that kind of situation. So I know it's not perfect, and I know I'm kind of just throwing numbers, but that is what I would imagine would entice these big studios to keep these guys around. You want to keep these studios active. Instead, Take-Two looks to their kind of indie department as like the weak links, which is like I don't – and I mean, you look at actually some of like the the official lingo, like the corporate talk. That is kind of what they're they're saying, right? Like they're doing the redundancies. They're they're trying to trim staff. They're trying to like focus on the major elements of their company. And it's like, well, yeah, I, I get that. I get that. Like Square Enix is doing that. Capcom has done that for a while. Sony did an evaluation. My, actually, literally everybody has done that. You know what I mean? It's so it's not uncommon. It's not crazy to do. But at the same time, don't you want to keep like a, a potential? random huge success you know what I mean like maybe it happens and if it doesn't happen how much money are these studios really costing you you know what I mean like is it that expensive per year to keep 50 to 80 people employed because I really I, I highly doubt that especially when their games actually do quite well so it just sucks again like you try to rationalize and I can see it in, in some examples like I really I, I, even uh, specifically like if you just make terrible games let's say right like I know firings and laying off like it's it's something you don't want to talk about online it's something that like scares people off but if you're constantly failing and you're the reason now sometimes you don't know that sometimes you don't know if the actual people making the games if they're the reason the game was bad sometimes it's other people that you don't even know but if you're literally making t- say terrible products and it's also not selling what what do you want them to do you know what i mean so sometimes it can make sense but for a company like take two with gta in you know just waiting behind the scenes for them to do studios that are not just critical, darlings, right? Because that's what I think Twitter cares about. That's what a lot of these, I think, game journalists care about. Again, like, yeah, it's cool. Like, winning awards, I'm sure they care. I'm sure the studio has some sort of pride in that. And I, I probably would, too. But as a consumer and with them being developers, I could care less what awards they win. I know that I liked their game. I know that they actually make quality games that I would support, right? And I did. I, I bought that game, right? So it's like, okay. And then on top of things, it actually sold well. So why are you going after that? I, I don't know. It, it, it is upsetting. It is. And it's it's making, I, I'd say, more people than certain other layoffs. Like sometimes layoffs will happen. You'll think about it or people will tweet about it for like a couple hours. It'll go away. This one feels like it's sticking around because it kind of feels just different, right? So then, I, it's not the biggest one. It's not the, it's not the highest amount of layoffs compared to the other ones. Like Sony's laid off more. Microsoft's laid off more. And, and those stayed around and then they kind of went away but I just feel like this one's a little bit different because of the situation so let me know what you guys think in the comments make sure as always you're subscribed to the channel bell icon turned on I hope to see you all on the next one